So, what if I told you that this garden from over here, as simple as this water tube, will produce 175,000 XP per hour, scratching the limit at how fast players can absorb, while providing you with 76,000 drops with looting 3, or at least 32,000 while AFK. But that's not it. What if I told you that this garden farm, the same as before with a slight bit of redstone, will give you 190,000 XP per hour, more than the maximum amount that a single player can absorb, with 83,000 drops or 34,000 while AFK. Still not impressed? No problem. Allow me to introduce to you the Guardian's Trocity, the ultimate single player or multiplayer overall XP farm capable of providing you 330,000 XP per hour with at least 30,000. This farm is in fact so powerful that if you AFK incorrectly with an auto clicker, you can crash your game. Because these XP orbs over here will pile up over time, causing massive lag spikes like right now, and you eventually, you know, crash your game or server. Now if you have a beefy computer, this won't do, but still, it's super powerful, especially of its size. But how is this farm so fast and how does it work you might ask? Now here I will explain. So the main concept of this farm is to have guardians spawn in bubble columns powered by soul sand where they will be pushed upwards and then carried horizontally then they take fall damage so they are on very low health and then they will get pushed into a killing chamber to uh, either be dropped to their death again, I mean like dropped to their death while AFK, or you can drop them into water on very low health to be killed by the player for XP. That is the main concept of the farm. Now, yeah, I know it sounds really simple, but this design is actually not simple considering the fact that uh, even a um, designing farm that gives you 18,000 guardians per hour is very difficult. This one gives you more than 30,000. Um, and yeah, Guardians drop 10 XP each, so just multiply by 10 for the XP. So, how does it work in details then? Well, if you ask me for two things that contribute to the speed of the farm, except the main bubble column concept, I would say it will be this glass roof and the squids that spawn in the farm. Now, normally having uh, unnecessary mobs in your spawning areas is actually a drawback because they prevent mobs, other mobs spawning inside them, which in this case will be guardians. Um, but actually, it doesn't slow down the farm. In case, uh, in fact, it actually speeds it up by three to five thousand guardians an hour, which is you know a lot. Um, and how does it do that though? Well, the answer is the guardians pathfinding. The pathfinding is when it tries to get somewhere using its AI or artificial intelligence. When guardians spawn, it takes them a tiny bit of time before they try to swim somewhere. And I can show you that using the mini HUD mod. Okay, pathfinding on. So now you can see their attempt to pathfind or to go to these green locations. Now, most of these are impossible, of course, which means that they will go, try to go as close as possible. And these are the paths that they're planning or have already taken. The red, the red ones are the ones that failed, and the blue ones are either um, it's possible they already go, gone through it or they're trying to go through it. So when the guardians they get pushed to the top because they can't really swim about in the bubble column, they will try to move there because when they spawn and by the time they get pushed to the top, most of them will be already pick will have already picked a location and be trying to go there. And you can see some of them here, like this one, who's frantically trying to swim down because maybe one of the locations he chose might be this one, these ones, or anyone below him. 
and that actually seriously slows down the farm because the guardian lingers here for uh, for longer holding up the mob cap and I'll explain about that in a second. Mm. What the squids do is that guardians can actually attack squids like players. Players and squids are the only two things guardians will try to attack. And, and when the guardian is charging his laser that you can see these purple to green beams um, or trying to attack someone, it will actually not try to swim about, which means that it will just get pushed passively by the water. And guardians actually get pushed way faster by flowing water than the other mob, which makes this design very beneficial. So the point is that guardians get distracted by the squids trying to attack them, which means that they will get pushed easy, easier by the water because they're not trying to swim around. And that, as I've said, contributes heavily to the uh, final rate and speed of the farm. And about and about the glass ceiling, that's actually even more important. Is like 99% of the farm that what, what the spawning is based on. Uh, it's called pack spawning, and this entire thing is meant to support it. Pack spawning is a part of the Minecraft spawning algorithm, where mobs spawn in groups, not in individuals. And it's quite complicated to explain in one video, and I'll get, uh, put a link of uh, pack spawning explained by a YouTuber called Logical Geek Boy um, down in the description. So if you want to learn more about Minecraft spawning algorithm, go ahead and watch that video. Okay, so now we're back to talking about the concepts of mob farms and things like mob cats that I've said in a second ago. So, Minecraft only allow up to 70 hostile mobs in a world, and there's also other uh, limits or called mob caps for things like passive mobs and um, water mobs, bats, etc. Um, when it, the limit is reached, then the game will stop trying to spawn any more new mobs. It will not remove any ones, but it will just stop trying to spawn. Which means that in order for a farm to keep on spawning guardians fast, we have to kill the newly spawned ones fast. And that's why uh, uh, everything in this farm is based on the idea that we have to get these guardians um, to spawn and get killed as fast as possible. And so, as I've said, I use the uh, bubble column to transport the guardians because that's one of the fastest ways without using things like nether portal because this is intended to be a overworld farm without using multiple dimensions because that's complicated and laggy. And I also chose to use the fastest, well, one of the fastest, if not the fastest, ways to damage uh, mobs, which is to use fall damage. Traditional farms, I mean most farms, use lava damage or, uh, to damage the guardians. That require less of a vertical space and the farm can be more horizontal. Horizontal farms are actually more beneficial for spawning, but because of the um, in, uh, pack spawning support and with the sufficient spawning spaces, spawning speed is actually not a problem for this farm. Now, um, one thing about um, lava damaging guardians in 1.13, I mean 1.14 above, I'm not sure if it applies to 1.13, but basically guardians AI or pathfinding abilities got changed a little bit, where before guardians will not try to swim in lava, which means that if they're in lava they will just sink and they will not try to swim up or about in lava trying to escape. But they changed that, and guardians now, if they're in lava, they're gonna try to swim up. Which makes lava killing systems or lava damaging systems really inefficient because up to one third of the guardians can die in the lava despite the lava um, depth. So the optimal lava depth for 1.12 will be 4 blocks because they're just gonna sink. Now, in newer versions, like 1.14 and above, Again, not sure 1.13. Even one block deep of lava will kill at least one fifth to a quarter of it because many of the guardians will try to swim up and they will just gonna keep on swimming until they die in the lava. They will not sink down. Even though some of them do, it's very inefficient. And using one layer of lava will make it so that some guardians are low on health, some of them will die in lava, and others are actually high on health. And that's Another reason why I chose uh, fall damage, um, other than the fact that it's super fast. And the 
the guardians route to their demise is they spawn, they get pushed up, they get pushed horizontally by this double layer water stream design that I've tested out to be the most efficient possible. Um, so normally, well, most designs they will have bubble columns and then they will have a solid water source surface and they have fence gates and a water stream on top. So they will get shot up through that air block or the fence gate open fence gate and they get carried by water stream. Now that is very efficient, but I found out that you can make it about like, I don't know, 10% more efficient by having water stream here too, instead of having still water. Because sometimes guardians can like jump around in this airspace over here. So that's out of the way. Guardians are nearly as fast as they can to get out of the water. We have to get them to uh, we have to get them into the killing chamber on the low health as fast as possible. We are here. I use trapdoors on the side to hold the water in, instead of um, things like a full block or like glass. The reason being is that guardians will have to float one block less because if there's a wall there, they have to float one block more and. That means that it's gonna take more time for them to float and increases the chance of them wandering around, swimming, um, struggling, trying to stay in the water as I've said due to their pathfinding. We need fences here because guardians are actually a tiny bit too big to fit uh, in a gap. Okay, let me demonstrate. So they're just 0 0.05 blocks too big to fit in a gap like this. So they can't fit underneath this, and neither can they fit something like this. So trapdoors are just a tiny bit too thick for them. So we need something like cobblestone walls, like walls or fences. And it didn't matter that much, but from my testing, fences are a tiny bit more efficient. Perhaps because they have, you know, more room to fall uh, from the top so that they don't get squished up over here. I did also try to use just completely fence gates or signs without the trapdoors, but that problem, as you might guess, is that guardians will end up back in the water. They'll go up, go down, and go up, go down. It doesn't happen often, it happens sometimes in a loop, and that's not efficient either, so I used the trapdoor design. And another benefit for a trapdoor is the fact that when they drop onto these blocks and get pushed by the pistons into the 2x4 killing chamber, Sometimes they'll cling onto the edge uh, because they're trying to jump and they'll need like two to three pushes at, until they fall. And the extra trapdoor on the sticky pistons will make sure that they're actually um, 0.125 blocks uh, away from the edge. So basically they're not like right up to the block on the piston push, they're actually a tiny bit away, which makes them harder to kind of like get pushed and cling back onto the block. Um, that also increases the efficiency, and that's the main idea of using the trapdoors and the fences. Now, as for the drop shaft or the killing chamber, the 2x4 design, um, the reason is being the sweeping uh, used to kill the guardians. We ideally want the largest killing chamber or uh, size possible without being too large, uh, it has more downside because you know. A larger killing chamber means that there can be more um, water tubes around it, uh, providing more spawning spaces and uh, making the guardians easier to go in because sometimes when it's kind of like overloaded over here, the guardians will push each other, making them harder to fall down. The sweep attack used to kill guardians is where uh, since the since 1.11, the enchantment sweeping edge has been added. Uh, where swords, um, after the combat update in 1.9, they would do sweeping damage, where if you hit one target, you know, they will hit ev damage everything around it. That has a limit to four blocks within the player, and one block from the mob being attacked. From the killing chamber right here, we'll be attacking the mob in the middle of the two blocks, and we want them to be within a block. So if you attack a guardian over here, as you can see, the one on the side will be within a block and the one on the other side will be a block. So this is the optimal drop shaft shape and that's why this entire farm is shaped like this. Every part of the farm took a lot of testing and designing with different concepts and ideas. And here is after a, 
a week of hard work and that's what I settled, settled on one of the best designs. Um, I've tested on each of the components from different ways to move the guardians in the water to different water streams that I've set on the top to push the guardians horizontally to different ways to damage them um, to different ways of getting them in the drop shaft. For example, I've tried to use this concept where we use um, shifting trapdoors on two layers so that um, guardians can fall through uh, in turns and all of them will also take full damage. Uh, this actually made it so that the water tubes are closer up together because the entire drop shaft is 2x4 where, where my final design was actually 4x6 um, because they had to get pushed one block in. That way the guardians are actually less uh, gushed up here at the top at the top where they might push each other and slow down the falling speed. Um, I mean slow down like the speed that get, they get pushed out of the water and fall down. So this design was a near success, but it wasn't quiet. And as I've said, uh, to make a faster mob farm, you want to get the mobs killed even faster. So here I only had the spawning chamber to be too wide, and that is actually my initial design on most of the, like I tested initially, like for like, I don't know, a couple of days, just uh, these two wide um, spawning chambers, and even with a slime block on top to try to get them out like nearly instantly um, and to combat the issue that uh, you know sometimes they have pathfinding uh, issue, like they have pathfinding annoyances even with these bits. Now this does get guardians out of the spawning water fast but another problem is that this as you can see it requires a larger like a larger um, area for them to fall and my initial response was to get them pushed by pistons into this uh, spot where then they're gonna push either by pistons, slime blocks, or water. Yes, I did test all of those methods uh, into the 2x4 killing chamber. This thing, the main problem was that all of the guardians would be jammed up over here. I tried all of the methods possible, including using like piston staircases, and I even, as you can see, added this solid block cube because um, this will reduce guardian pathfinding making them uh, flow, pass, uh, flow passively but it still didn't quite work because with you know 30,000 guardians per hour it will be really, really, really cramped in here and just everything just goes on slowly and that's how in the end I settled up on these sort of design concepts and I have three versions of the farm as shown in the intro for different needs. Now this farm over here is what I call the easy version with zero redstone, really simple to build. Um, now you might think you have to drain the ocean, but there is a really easy way to drain the ocean and including taking down the ocean monument without being harassed by guardians. I'll explain in a second. Um, so this is the easy version, again you can see it only has a two wide um, spawn area, but this is sufficient enough to provide you nearly 18,000 XP per hour and not even reaching the mob cap. Uh, it has no redstone and no nothing. Um, so this is a really good design, simple to build in survival, as you can see it doesn't really require much resources, you barely even need any piece of soul sand. Um, here the trapdoors go down until here so that the guardians you know they have a tiny they have tiny bit less room so that they will fall down by themselves easier yes this does require the guardians themselves uh, for, to fall down themselves but it works really well so if i come down here turn on the water mode, xp mode and this is the killing area. Now, this design was inspired by uh, Nembon, uh, who is really also a really great um, Minecrafter who designs really, really awesome things. Now, I've changed it a little bit um, so that it, there's a trapdoor over here, so you fit snugly between this one and that one. So you can barely move half a pixel, and uh, you fit between this wall and this fence. So as you can see, it fits really well, you don't move much, and you don't need anything like a cobweb. So this farm near provides you with nearly continuous XP, which is uh, 18,000 XP per hour. 
Um, why is that? It's because players can absorb a maximum of 10 XP orbs per hour. And Guardians, they each drop 10 XP with 2 XP orbs. Uh, one has a value of 3, one has a value of 7, a total of 10. Um, you can see that in the Minecraft wiki about experience. Yeah. It's quite complicated. But we want to find the mod that gives the most amount of XP with a few, um, uh, with the least amount of orbs, because uh, as I've said, uh, the absorption speed is limited on the number of orbs, not on the number of XP in terms of the value. And guardians and blazes are the best mods, because each of them drop 10 XP with two orbs, giving an average of five XP per orbs. Things like zombie pigment, um, they drop uh, around. 1 point, I think is about 1.3 orbs uh, per mob, and their XP though is only um, 6 to 8, which means that the average value of XP orb is less, means that, means that the maximum you can absorb is less. Uh, it's somewhere around 16,000, uh, not 16,000, 160,000, uh, which you know is uh, 20,000 less than value mobs. Um, as you can see, the XP here is continuous. And this farm over here is the same as the easy version, except they have pistons over here to push the guardians so they fall faster, and slime gogs on top. Now, if squids will spawn in the chambers, these slime gog pistons will be unnecessary. But one of the goals for this is to be simple so you can build it easily in survival. Now, no squid will spawn in these chambers naturally due to the fact that all of them will spawn outside being that there are millions of water blocks that are all suitable for spawning. Except if you want to drain the entire ocean 128 blocks away from the uh, from your killing chamber, uh, you will need these slime block pistons. They're not, they're not laggy or costly at all I would say. Um, and this one here is the same concept as showed in and the Guardian's Trocity farm, where they use pistons with trappers to push them off the edge and down here to be killed. This one will constantly provide you with a, a flow of XP that you can never finish absorbing if you swing your sword continuously. Um, it gives it gives a. Uh, 190,000, which is, you know, 10,000 above the limit that you can absorb, which means that if you AFK with this, like with an auto-clicker, uh, they do cause a bit of lag due to the pileup. Now, they do despawn the XP orbs, they do despawn after 5 minutes, but during the 5 minutes time, still, a lot of them can pile up and cause some lag. And as you can see, the XP is continuous. A few more things to say here. Um, so first of all, in uh, let me just go to survival. The recommended armor for AFK will be protection for unbreaking three and mending. Uh, thorns is not recommended as it just uh, causes more durability and uses more XP to repair armor. Um, the sword is a max dot sword. Um, knockback two is not required. It doesn't make much of a difference. Fire aspect can be used to get some cooked fish, even though they're in water, they still drop cooked fish. Now, uh, in case you didn't know, guardians, they have kind of like thorns as the enchantment on the armor, which means that if you hit them, they're gonna deal some damage to you and knock you back. And that's also the reason that we need this snugly fit inside killing chamber with this trapper layout so you can hit the guardians while they can't see you and neither can they hit you. Um, if you have a beacon with strength to regen, I mean, if you have a beacon with resistance to and regeneration, you do not need to wear any armor. But for long-term AFK, if you want to hit them frequently, it's still better to wear some armor. But you should be able to regenerate fast enough so that you won't die. Uh, this is especially useful if you want to repair your tool. So here we have a testificate pickaxe. It's non-modified, it's a mending pickaxe with a zero to grit dura durability. And let me just show you how fast it gets repaired. So, so let me just hit them and then hold the pickaxe. And 
and as you can see the durability literally flies up. There we go. Now since you can absorb 180,000 XP per hour or um, 50 XP per second, uh, the time it takes to repair a pickaxe with a durability, I mean with zero durability out of uh, 1561 will be just under 32 seconds so just um, take 30 seconds as the approximate um, the thing is that due to the way mending works it's best to wear no armor with mending and do not hold anything else other than the pickaxe with mending for the uh, fastest results uh, the reason being is that as long as you're wearing or holding pieces that of armor or tool that has mending Despite uh, being it fully uh, mended or not, when you absorb an XP, the game, I guess you can say, assigns uh, randomly the XP to one of these pieces of armor or tools, and then it will check whether or not it needs the XP to repair. When it doesn't need, it will just go to your level, your XP bar, and when it does need, it will consume the XP. That being said, if you're wearing four pieces of mending armor, um, holding your mending sword and holding that in your offhand, even though that will still mend your pickaxe, there is only a one sixth chance. I mean, uh, a one sixth chance of the XP being assigned to it, which means that it will only repair at one sixth of the speed. So that's why I recommend having a beacon uh, and taking your armor off while hitting, the, uh, while either using a sword without mending or just hitting it and quickly swapping it out of your hand. So like this. And normally one hit will mostly mend it like nearly nearly and then uh, except if you're I mean if you have a tiny bit of durability left it will fully mend it look here there uh, you only need like 160 more um, XP so uh, I would say you wouldn't use your pickaxe until it says zero out of 1500 uh, you probably leave some f uh, headroom, so normally you can mend a diamond tool in one hit. So here we are back at the Guardian's Trocity from the Advanced Farm. Uh, now you might ask, now that you know that the um, absorb limit for XP is 18, uh, I mean 180,000 per hour, why would you even need this farm? Now there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one uh, will be you can build another uh, killing chamber like another killing window with the trapdoors and the setup exactly like this on this side and so you just mirrored so you can have two players use it at the same time or uh, if you know you just want yourself to use this farm uh, it, you, it, I mean you'll still benefit from the full XP amount if you're playing on a server that has either a feature to combine XP orbs like speak out servers those performance um, improve server or to have the feature of xp no cooldown like on the carpet mod so we have the carpet mo mod right here so what this does is that it wait okay what this does is that it uh, removes the cooldown that's required for the players to absorb xp which is 10 orbs a second making you absorbing xp orbs instantly so let me just show you this i'll be using a sword without mending so that's the best to repair the tool. I'll be standing here, be going to survival. Uh, there's no actual beacon here, so I just apply the effect to myself. They're legit. And I'll just hit those guardians a few times. Uh, yeah, the sound is kind of satisfying. And as you can see, like you got those repair in like two seconds. Because you absor absorb them instantly. Now if I get a new one, does look so 1,300 durability in like half a second. Uh, this is what will happen on uh, things like speedbot servers, uh, because their XP margin is more aggressive than the carpet mod. The carpet mod default XP margin is not actually very aggressive; like they merge kind of slowly. On things like speedbot servers, they merge really fast, and you're gonna end up. If you stand far away and hit him, you're gonna end up with a gigantic orb that's gonna give you something like 200 levels. And here just to cl clarify, and I have this in every world, this command lock is not cheating. If you open it, you can see it just kills all the items. 
the reason being that I have no hopper or whatsoever collection system underneath. So, you know, we have to find some way to remove the item so it doesn't lag the game. And by the way, if you're gonna have a collection system, the truth is that having eight hoppers underneath each of the enchantment tables is actually not enough. Uh, the farm produces uh, more items than those hoppers can handle. Each hopper can handle 9,000 items per hour, and eight uh, being 72,000. But this farm can produce 83,000, which, you know, is more, as I've said. No, 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 this farm can produce even more than 83. The advanced version can produce 83, uh, which is, you know, this farm will produce like two times. So, you will either want to use hopper mine cars or. I don't know, some other solution. I haven't designed a storage system, and maybe you can design one of your own, but it's just a thing to tell you that it's really, really fast. Now, let's talk about building this, and, you know, in survival. Um, first things first, you need to find an ocean monument. After you found it, you need to tear it down. Now, there, you either drain it first and then tear it down, or you tear it down first and then drain it. In my opinion, uh, tearing it down and then draining it is easier uh, if you're gonna follow the steps I'm gonna explain in a second. So, uh, the best way to tear it down is to get a conduit, um, get some potions of invisibility, so if you drink it, the guardians can attack you. Um, the maximum amount of armor you can wear is one is a helmet, otherwise the guardians can still see you. And that's really good actually, because then you can have a call affinity and uh, they'll help you break blocks faster. A conduit will give you water breathing and a haste to beacon, which will allow you to insta mine the entire monument. Um, I did it with a friend on vanilla survival server. It didn't take any longer than two hours uh, with both of us. Um, and as for draining the ocean monument, the easiest way that you can do it in a couple of minutes will be using um, Dragon X to drown it. Now, before you just drop, it's totally possible to duplicate a s any uh, gravity blocks like sand and anvil and dragon eggs if you're willing to do so in your survival world. Um, and if you are, then I'll put a link down to a video by Ray's Works on how you can drain an entire ocean monument in 10 seconds with dragon eggs. Now, uh, the duplication machine is 100% automatic too. Uh, and you can just AFK you know, with the duplication machine like overnight and you get more than uh, the X necessary to drain the entire ocean one. Again, the link will be in the description, go watch out that video if you're interested, because that way draining the entire ocean one is just easy peasy. And then to build in this one, I made it as simple as possible, it's not really too hard. And as for the other thing, which is to get squish to spawn in there, which you need to drain the water 128 blocks around the player, which is the radius the mobs can spawn in. Uh, you can also use the dragon egg technique. And another bummer is that you have to light up the caves, even if you don't drain this entire area. And by the way, this entire area is bigger than 128 blocks. I just drained it, I, I mean, I used world edit and I just like a bigger parameter. And you have to light up all the caves and slap the... Okay, that was lag. And slap the slime chunks uh, for the best uh, out of the best, I mean for the best out of this garden atrocity. But the good thing is that, before you rage quit, is that the other two designs, the uh, Guardian Farm Easy Version and Advanced Version for the 19, for 190,000 XP, I've taken that into consideration, and believe it or not, it actually only uses a bit over half of the mod cap, means that you do not even have to drain the ocean uh, for uh, to spawn drown to stop drown from spawning. Yes, they are a problem too, um, and neither do you have to. Uh, slam the slime chunks. But lighting up the caves is still necessary because otherwise you're just gonna have mobs in the caves and no mobs in the farm. Unfortunately, I will not be recording a block by block tutorial in this video for the sake of time and the fact that I'll be providing world downloads for all three of these versions. But if you want to build this in a survival world, I'll suggest you checking out the mod called Lightmatica. I'll put the link in the description where um, it will overlay the entire build 
uh, in your survival world uh, wherever you wish it to be so that you can just place blocks according to it. It's really simple and easy to use, even better than a video tutorial. Um, but if you really do want a block by block video tutorial, uh, tell me sh be sure to let me okay lag okay be sure to let me know down in the comments um, and maybe I'll consider making one. But if you have the time to feel free to just make a tutorial and share it with others. And this is what happens when too much XP orbs are there. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching this video and for all of your support. I'm nearly there to 100 subscribers and see you guys next time.